I was telling this in the Hindi class yesterday. See, what is the work of a guru? First of all, you should understand. Then we go into it. In the second part of BPHS, Maitreya is specifically telling Parashar that the planetary calculation is very cumbersome and tiresome. Because of that, I don't think we, the, the forthcoming people of Kali Yuga, who have who will have a short lifespan and who will have a little bit of understanding, short and little understanding also, will be able to do it. Remember that he is talking about the calculation of planetary speed. Maitreya did not know that we will make softwares out of it. He somehow thought that we will do the manual calculation that was very difficult to do. So 80% of the thing, 80% of the thing which Maitreya is uh, inhabit, inhabited about is more related to the calculation of planetary speed, right? But then he makes a comment that even the principles that you have told in part one, and as I have clearly told you, whatever Parasha tells in part one is a compilation of what different sages before Parasha tell. So Parasha have specifically mentioned this is told by this person, I have repeated it to you. This is told by this person, I have repeated it to you. Parasha tells that. And Maitreya gives him an inhibition again. Then I don't think using these many principles, we will be able to predict the result. So you know what you do. What you do is you try looking at it this way, that you try looking at it this way, that divisional chart is a different method to looking at it. Raja Yoga analysis is a different method to look at it. House Lord analysis is a different method to look at it. And these are all different, different methods to look at it. A point which I have also told you when I was teaching you Ashtagar. The only problem that we do in astrology is that we understand astrology as a whole. It is okay to understand astrology as a whole. See the example that I have given you. In a car, there is an accelerator and there is a brake. And they both are the components of the car. Somehow, you don't press them both at the same point. Right, so you press either of them. You press both of them at a particular point of time when you want to drift it or something else. Such. That's another scenario, the third case scenario. But the basic point is you have to particularly understand that everything of them have a particular uses. When you have to go for the timing of events and other type of analysis, you will go to Ashtakvarga and all these things. However, looking at the history of astrology, right? from day one up to the destruction that happened before the Mughal invasion, right? The history of astrology after Mughal invasion, I don't consider that as an authentic history, dilapidated history it is. In that history, the analysis of house, house lord and significator is the most important thing that is repeated everywhere. Right? Everywhere in astrology, the analysis of house, house lord and significator is again and again and again repeated. So basically speaking, no matter what technique, whatever I have taught you in the course, forget everything. House, house, lord, significator analysis is the most important analysis. Now, in that analysis, you have more methods. You can remain in the D1 chart, use the basics of Rashi, see the combinations in detail, see the Raj Yogas, etc. in detail and can predict. That's the one method that you have. Or secondarily, you can go to divisional charts. The two primary methods for divisional charts that I have told you. Now, the first primary method of divisional chart is a substitute for Raja Yoga analysis. So either you do a normal Raja Yoga analysis, Kendra, Kona relationship, either you go this way or you see a set of divisional charts for that particular method. Whatever you want to do, that depends on either your preference, your ease with the technique or your practice. Right? So the approach of mixing everything is not going to work. Remember that checking seventh from moon, seventh from ascendant and seventh from sun for the purpose of marriage is a Sudarshan Chakra concept. Checking seventh from Venus for the purpose of marriage is Ashtakvarga concept. Checking seventh house, seventh lord, relationship of the seventh house and seventh house lord is a general standard analysis concept. Analysis of Navamsha 
for the method of marriage is a divisional chart method for analyzing marriage. Rather, I should say wrong divisional chart method for analysis of marriage. The only thing is you don't use all four of them at once. That's the basic point. If you use all four of them at once, it will be like pressing the accelerator and the brake at the same point, which will basically lead you to no result along with uh, leaving aside the bitter experience that it will lead you to. You don't do that. You be very clear about what needs to be done, what does not need to be done. When you are checking seventh from Venus, the planet who is the seventh lord from Venus, the planet who is in seventh from Venus, go to Ashtagvarga, jump to Ashtagvarga, check Ashtagvarga. That's all. Right? Do that. Regarding Ashtagvarga also, I'm just going to teach you a technique which I forgot to teach you previously. You know, now I'm getting old, you know, fainting memory. That's the first thing. Now, secondary point. I specifically want to highlight this. The purpose of Guru. So as Maitreya tells his inhibition to Parashar that you have told us a lot of techniques that we are not able to use now, we think. So now you tell me a simple method. You tell me simple method. Using which simple method, things can be done very easily. Then Parashar tells you, okay. Then Parasha tells Maitreya that, okay, now I am going to tell you a method which is simple to apply, which does not contradict what is told earlier. Understand the point that it is no substitute. Ashtakvarga is no substitute for a house house lord analysis. Ashtakvarga is just a simpler method to do the same. However, it is simple, not as effective as. As I have told you in Ashtagvarga also, using Ashtagvarga, you can say marriage is good or bad. Using house, house lot analysis, you can precisely point out that commitment is not an issue, but the longevity of marriage seems to be an issue. Ashtagvarga will tell you marriage is bad. House, house lot analysis will tell you that marriage is bad because the spouse is having bad health. So you precisely understand when you say according to Ashtagvarga, marriage is bad, you actually don't know the reason. So house, house, lord, karaka analysis is the basic point that is there, right? The method given by Parashar is simple and easy, but the earlier method you cannot forget and house, house, lord analysis is the basic point that you have to keep in mind. But the prime thing that I specifically want to talk about here is what is the purpose of Guru? And as basically, I think, you know, these are the things we should be clear from day one. But somehow, I presuppose, so, sorry to the traditional upbringing that I have been into, I presuppose that people know a few things which they don't. Coming to the point of, in the tradition, when I, you know, first told that, I, I, I wanted to do MBA though. But somehow I decided that MBA is not my cup of tea, let me do Jyotish. So there was a very small booklet that was given to me, 12 pages, three shlokas per page, a very small book, but only in Sanskrit. And that was Guru Charitra, the character of the Guru. So if you are going to be a teacher, you should have a definite character. It had a lot of things. That you should be true to your words. You should not have lust. You should not have greed. You should not have this. You should not have that. If you are teaching, don't teach with the footwear on. If you are teaching, don't cover your head. If you are doing a mantra chanting, always cover your head. And all these things are there. And so the basic point is the solar plexus is in the front of the head. So that should not be covered. The brahmistan should not be covered. And everything else. Are there. Lots of rules and regulations. In the end, there is a very beautiful passage. Just two, three lines before. Then in the end, it comes, you know, I am this person living in this village, writing this book at this point of time, dedicating it to this, this person. This is what comes into the end. The third last shloka specifically tells us in Hinduism. And see, this is very important. If you are going to study the, if you are going to study Kant, Immanuel Kant, you have to understand the Western philosophy. What I was doing, me and my wife nowadays, some days ago, we are reading philosophy. So 
when you read western philosophers like they are so prejudiced about you know uh, how should women be and how should this be and how should they are much about morals indian philosophers are not much behind morals because the morals and ethics is already outlined by vedas and puranas and all of it so we are not concerned about morals at all if you are learning a hindu system as of jyotish you should know the hindu way of teaching and hindu way of learning it also right going by the temperament of the place the particular thing that a guru should do a guru should learn from his guru or by himself either way like buddha gautam buddha this one the buddhism founder so gautam buddha didn't did not learn from any guru gautam buddha gets the knowledge by himself and you know what gautam buddha was sitting under a tree being hungry meditating for knowledge and no knowledge comes to him then there is a lady i forgot the name of the lady that lady comes to him offer him some food he takes the food and then meditates again now while eating and he gets the knowledge in that time some students put inhibition on buddha that why he is taking food from a woman as buddha got self realization and buddha is an incarnation of vishnu is what we consider so what buddha is saying is what vishnu is saying and vishnu i think i i don't know i have explained it or not whatever vishnu is saying is the dharma till the next incarnation comes that's the basic point that right? because vishnu in his incarnations give you a way to live until the next incarnation comes buddha is the last incarnation the next will be kalki kalki is yet to arrive so buddha stands up and buddha tells that whoever student have a doubt on me whoever student have any inhibition that why i am taking food given by a lady i will not teach them and those who have trusted me up to this extent i will teach them this is what he have done so i think the first thing that is important is to trust that whatever the person see if you have a shaking faith in your guru it is not going to lead you at any given place so buddha is very clear about it see you know what in bhagavad gita in ramayan when rama gives knowledge he does not ask anyone who are you he gives knowledge to everyone there is ram gita and everything as such in bhagavad gita after rama comes krishna when krishna gives the knowledge he gives knowledge to arjun who is his friend so krishna tells you you always have to educate your family members and people who are connected to you you educate your well wishers you don't educate those who are not your well wishers so krishna is not giving knowledge to duryodhan but somehow krishna is giving knowledge to kans uh, kans ke ro karna as well but buddha is now very clear that now the new rule is you give knowledge to those who trust you and you don't give knowledge to those who don't trust you buddha is very clear about to arjun krishna is not asking do you trust me you know in between bhagavad gita arjun becomes suspectible so that krishna have to come in the huge form and tell him see i am the person krishna have to tell him again and again i am the god i am the krishna tells him krishna does not suppose arjun to believe him but buddha tells you that no you believe me then we are going to do something and if you don't believe me okay thank you this is what he does so that is the first basic point second early the purpose of guru either he gets the knowledge from the tradition or he gets the knowledge by himself either ways it can happen you know people have different iq no any knowledge is not self developed at all so either you get the knowledge from the guru or you get knowledge from books either ways after getting the knowledge from people practicing the science before you you take that knowledge and the most important step is this is what is told you revalidate that knowledge with your experience and you add something to that knowledge with your experience then you teach it to your students now guru being guru is a fashion that is okay you can be a guru that's not an issue if you want to be into fashion you can be but the primary quality is first of all you should have complete knowledge of everything as a guru if you ask me sir what is the philosophy of kant i don't know i don't teach philosophy also 
But talking of astrology, if I tell you that I don't know this particular branch of astrology, somehow I am not apt to be a guru. Secondary teacher I can be, that is okay. That's the first point. Secondarily, you should be able to rectify what is already there in Jyotish and add things according to your experience. That is the basic point. So everyone, Virgu, Parashar and everyone have added something from their arsenal that, okay, this is from my side, this is from my side, this is from my side. They have added to it. This is when you become a guru, right? So to become a teacher earlier times, you know, Gurukul, what used to happen, the Indian system of teaching. You first write a commentary on the subject that you are teaching. If you are a grammar teacher, you have to write a book on grammar. And once other teachers validate that book is good, you can become a grammar teacher otherwise not. Because if you cannot produce a book, can you teach a student? Now, production of book is a symbolical criteria. The basic point is if you cannot derive a simpler method to teach your students, what you are going to do, right? So Parashar have done the same thing. He have devised a simpler method, right? A method which was relevant for Maitreya, not a method which will be relevant for you, right? Now the time has changed. I have astrological softwares and many calculations and those software does some calculations wrong and some calculations good. And as a guru, because I have my own opinion, my three advices will be there. First of all, the house, house lord significator analysis is the most important one. Don't forget it. Secondarily, as a guru, because see, this is what Parashar is doing. In the second part of BPHS, when Parashar is talking about his contributions or you know when para, when metre have already told him that give me a simple method parasha tells him if the planet is exalted then even malefic will not give a bad result when a planet is debilitated even benefic will not give a good result basically meaning that when a planet become exalted or mulu trigona or swarashi or vargottam they lose their natural nature and become benefic when a planet become combust when a planet becomes debilitated, they lose their bad nature, they lose their good nature and they become bad. If they are malefic planets, they become more malefic. If exalted planet is a benefic planet, they become more beneficial. This is what Parashar is saying. Now, the exaltation Rashi of sun and the exaltation degree of sun remains constant. Right? Whatever is the result of exaltation, that also remains constant. What Parashar is adding is if sun is exalted, he will give bad good result despite being a malefic. It should be treated as a benefit, not as a benefit. It will give good result is the basic point that he is making. Right? So this is the contribution that he is putting in. And if you want to use the course to its fullest, follow the method that I have. The worst thing that we do in astrology is somehow we think that we are better than our teachers. That, that is never the... You see, we are a separate personality. I don't, I don't know why this betterment thing comes. I am better than Bill Gates. No, I am Shubham. He is Bill Gates. They are two different people. So don't be better. The basic purpose, the basic point I am telling you is we are not going with what Parashar is saying, but he is into a different time zone. We are into a different time zone. Whatever I have given you is what works. In my experience, you follow it as it. So we have learned special tips when we are reading, when we are doing the house, house lord analysis at that point of time also. And we are reading special thing at every given point of time. But if you want to have success in prediction, you have to follow the method that I have given you. And the biggest problem in astrology, you know what happens. If you want to read classics, you can read as many classics as you want. But if you read astrologers, that becomes a problem. There are three astrologers, astrologer A, astrologer B, astrologer C. The problem is people read all three of them. And after reading all three of them, they cannot come to a result. You read only one. Follow the method of that one. That works. An amalgamation of more than one will not work. Right? So if you just go by what I am teaching you, I can assure you and I can guarantee you of your success. As I guarantee every prediction of now. But if you you know, go beyond what I am telling you, then I take zero guarantee for that particular method, right? So be very clear about it and only do that much that is being told in the way that it is being told, then it is sure. Right? As the teacher, 
my purpose in throughout throughout this course have been to present you with those functional formulas of a horoscope analysis keeping in mind the method that parashar have to that i am not using gemini into it right because gemini is a separate stream so keeping in mind the stream of parashar and not only parashar how that stream have developed from parashar up to the year 2022 taking the best part out of it how it works adding my researches to it my refinement to it adding my contributions to it and teaching it to you a method which infallibly works and which you use the way i have told you i can take 100% guarantee of whatever you predict in between if you come across any problem i am already there drop me a message either a personal message or a message in the group or anywhere i will be there to help you provided the fact that you follow the method that i have given. in spirituality you know guru will always tell you if you do the mantra that i have given you you will realize god but if you leave my mantra and you start doing another mantra then i cannot do it so that's the basic point that you have to keep in mind the first thing secondly answer me a particular question regarding the rashmi the rashmi of planets the uses of the rashmi of planets is extremely clear to you right there is one more thing that i will want to add you see this ishta parashar kasht parashar these two things you see what how i have reached to it i should explain it from basics you go to strength it will come here you go to other strength it will come here you right click on it you select rashmis and ishta kasht fal of parashar click over it. right this is generally used in dasha dasha this person or this person for are leave it this person as per vimishottari standard is going through venus mahadasha how will be the dasha of venus east means good result kasht means bad result venus 14.59 good result 45.41 bad result what do you say good result is 14 bad result is 45 dasha seems to be struggle because bad results are quite low as compared to good results seems that the dasha is not that great right this is a general thumb rule method that is there right the easy method of parashar to decide however parashar is telling matreya that follow my method it does not contradict but what i am telling you that always go with normal house house lot analysis the method i have done because i have had many things into it you know the multiplication principle the uses of navamsha the uses of divisional charts which planet to be taken which way these are all my contributions right so i will still tell you in the horoscope venus is getting directional strength it is expected by saturn that is a friend so basically tell that venus dasha because of directional strength is going to give good professional life and because of getting expected by friend is also going to give a smooth life but because being expected by malefic there will be some hardships and struggles that is our general analysis and if we do it percentage by percentage we can say there is 45 bad result and 14 good result okay this is generally used in the shantar dasha analysis second one if you quickly want to see the success of the person ishta means what i should explain ishta means whatever you desire you achieve that kasht means you have a trouble or tension in your day to day life whatever you desire does not happen right so ishta is basically the fulfillment of desire kasht is non fulfillment of desire obstacles in the fulfillment of desire so what you have to do you have to add both of them so i will use two calculators for that hmm first of all add the ishta of all the planets sun is 29.66 moon is 13.91 mars is 23.30 mercury is 48.27 jupiter is 36.39 venus is 14.59 and saturn is 41.76 a total of 207.88 now add the negative points in total 30.34 for sun 
46.09 for moon, 36.70 for Mars, 11.73 for Mercury, 23.61 for Jupiter, 45.41 for Venus, and 18.24 for Saturn. The bad result is 212. The good result is 207. Basically, the bad result outnumbers the good result, meaning that the wishes and desires of the native, the ultimate wish and desire of the native will not be fulfilled. And struggle will take, will go to four. So my simple advice will be rather than depending on the Isht versus Kast table for the Dasha, how the Dasha will be, ignore that point. Do a Dasha analysis in a normal way. And if you quickly want to know the person is successful or not, do a total of it and that will tell you. If the Ishta is better, whatever you wish to achieve, you achieve it very smoothly. And if the Kashta is more, there will be much obstacles on the way. And somehow, before fulfilling the wishes and desires completely, you will die. Now, many people may take it negatively. Somehow, you know what? Many a times this happens, people take things negatively. I don't understand how can you take our information negatively. WHO is telling you that Corona is going to be very disastrous. Many people will die. Do you take it as negative? I take it as informational. Okay. <laughs> many people are going to die. That's okay. So don't be so sentimental about it. If a bad result is there, it is there. Right, so uh, that's that's nothing much to worry about. There is another point about Sudarshan as well. We have learned the Sudarshan chart, you know that, right? 